So, okay, we've talked about uh, all this biology stuff. Uh, what's the real kicker here? The real kicker is whether or not you're going to flood or not. And does this particular initiative provide uh, benefits from a flood profile perspective? Now, I'm out of my uh, league here because this is uh, hydraulic engineering. And uh, what I'm basically doing is just reiterating the stuff from some of the reports that have been produced. So, under the five-year agreement, uh, one of the things that had to happen under the agreements, selected gravel removal sites must provide hydraulic benefits, including managing flood levels, controlling erosion, and maintaining navigable channels. And this was a confidential uh, document, a uh, briefing note for one of the ministers that we obtained through FOI. So they knew that this was an important thing to do and were these conditions met. Well, we don't think that they really were. The provincial government took the position that uh, the Fraser River between Hope and Mission was filling up with sediments and compromising flood safety. And that's a fair enough question. You know, we, we certainly don't, um, we don't argue that it's an important question to investigate. Uh, the regulatory uh, ministries, and uh, in particular Section 9 under the Water Act, insisted that the folks that deal with that insisted that large-scale gravel removal had to come out of the river um, to alleviate flood threat. And uh, for many of the sites, not all of them perhaps, but many of the sites, uh, the, the engineering, um, the hydraulic models, uh, some of the fluvial geomorphic uh, information suggested a lot of these projects really uh, were not uh, scientifically justified. This is kind of like a reverse bathymetric map. And it says, well, if you remove 2.8 million cubic meters of gravel from the site, how much will the water surface elevation drop? And so, uh, again, um, I, I'll just mention that 2.3 million is roughly uh, the uh, five-year agreement. Um, and uh, what we end up happening here with 2.8, and this is all modeled, it's all computer modeled, but this is how decisions are made within the uh, uh, government agencies. You had a one-inch drop uh, from Minto Channel, Island 22, up to Gill Island, and then from Gill Island you had a three-inch drop. Now, intuitively to me, that, uh, that uh, is an absurd, uh, absurdly small uh, water surface elevation gain or drop to uh, take for all that habitat. But again, I'm not, a, I'm not a hydraulic engineer. It's not my role to be able to say that this is good or, or isn't good. But let's see what the uh, engineers say. Well, this is the same report that uh, that particular graph was uh, produced from. And this is what the conclusions were. It does not appear that large-scale gravel removals from the gravel reach of the Fraser River are effective in lowering the flood profile. And that comes right from the hydraulic engineer who's actually got a lot of experience uh, here in British Columbia with fisheries as well. Uh, we've got uh, other folks that are in the engineering profession. Uh, Dr. Rob Miller, who's a hydraulic engineer out at UBC Engineering. And he was quite candid. Uh, he, in fact, had been part of the original design, the experimental design, the inventory and assessment. And he says, individual gravel removal operations in the gravel reach will have negligible or insignificant effects on the flood profile. And certainly, we have heard in the papers from some of the agency folks that, in fact, an individual site does, does give us benefits. Uh, Peter Ward, again, he was involved in the original deliberations. Uh, for gravel removal, very well respected uh, hydrologist out of UBC. As a hydrology engineer who's been involved with matters concerning Fraser River flooding for many years, I am surprised about why this project at Spring Bar could possibly be justified on the basis of flood control. Looks as though someone proceeded with the construction work without getting or listening to competent advice. Please copy this email as needed. Even the technical guys, these decisions are made by managers. The technical guys had some very strong opinions on this. Um, in 2007-2008, uh, Spring Bar didn't have much fisheries information. Fisheries assessments needed before extractions contem con contemplated. And this was just several months before it actually came out. The manager for DFO said Spring Bar has been identified as a strategic location for gravel removal and reduce the flood risk in the vicinity in the spring of 2008. So we had a meeting. The stewardship committee had a meeting with uh, Barry Penner in October, and the engineer in charge said it wouldn't have been my first cho choice. And basically, he was telling the minister I did not support that particular gravel removal. And those of us sitting around the table were actually quite shocked. 
And so I'm going to just, <laughs> I just went through the numbers and the technical teams opposing it because Sturgeon Society has their scientists, the, uh, at the uh, Stewardship Committee has their scientists, there's D, uh, scientists with the Ministry of Environment, uh, three PhDs, six MSCs, one BSc equally, equaling 350 years of professional fisheries experience and the two managers DFO and Water Stewardship Division, as far as I know, have no fisheries experience, uh, overruled all those guys. And what did the Ministry of Environment say? The ecosystem sections got, section guys who uh, provide information to Water Stewardship Division, who are the Water Act authorizers, said environmental stewardship recommends that this application not be approved. So the ministry is telling its own ministry this is a bad deal.